So cloud gaming, uh, um, when it started, was something that lots of people were on record as saying, this can never work, it's impossible. Um, but what, what they didn't realize it would be people coming to work every day and, and, and sort of trying to work out every possible way to make things um, um, work faster. And I think it was a very important moment in the last 12 months where um, we got the game Bulletstorm to run um, locally. Uh, you know, uh, the, the cloud version and the local version are exactly the same. And so, or in fact, I think the cloud game version is actually a little faster. But this was done independently by um, a company called Digital Foundry. And so the fact that they, they showed that cloud gaming can be as fast as local gaming really caused everyone to go, well, hold on a minute. And, uh, and where, where it's going to go in the future is we've realized that most of the delay is not in the network, as everyone expected. It's actually in the television sets. And so if we can get some of the latency out of the television sets and use that for the network, a lot of games will start to become um, um, potentially faster from the cloud than local. And that just makes people's heads go on fire. It's like, what? It just doesn't make any sense. How could a game be faster locally but uh, or, or faster from the cloud? And so that's where I think it's going to go. I think you're going to see more and more games that start to feel as if the, you know, the, the experience that you're having is going to make you believe that this game is actually running locally. And so then the, 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 the watershed moment that I'm waiting for is when we put a game in the cloud that, that, that's um, higher quality than someone could run locally. So their machine's just not up to it. And now they're getting to experience games that their machines just quite frankly can't run or they, they're, the chips in their television are just completely incapable of running games of this quality. And so that's when you start going, even the hardcore guys, when they see a super awesome game that's only available from the cloud that plays great, um, I think that's when cloud gaming is really going to start to register across the whole gaming audience. There's a lot of things that, that cloud gaming actually brings um, as, as conceptually to gaming that haven't actually been exploited yet or haven't been uh, even tried yet that I'm interested in seeing. And that would be things like um, discovery. If you are hardcore and you care about games, you want to experience those games as quickly as possible. Um, and, and, and people will stand outside of GameStop you know, at midnight to, to get their hands on something first. Now, while that disc is being manufactured, there's actually nothing to stop the publisher putting it online and letting you play it from the cloud. You're not actually getting a physical copy of the game, you're, but you're able to experience it. And so I'm excited about um, game pre-releases from the cloud because it's, the, the data is still secure. It's not like it's going to be put across BitTorrent or something and ruin the launch of the game. Um, but wouldn't that be cool if you, the hardcore guys, could get to touch stuff before it actually launches? And I think cloud gaming is the only way that would ever happen. Um, and then secondly is, say you're the guy that discovers this game. So it came out at 9 a.m. this morning, and because of cloud gaming, it's not even 9.01 yet, and you're already playing it. And you tweet to your friends, join me, it's awesome, it's out. And, and, and you hit the send button on the, on the tweet. All of your friends don't even need to know where this game came from, what publisher, they don't have to go create accounts or log into anything. They just click your tweet, and, uh, and the game launches, and then we actually know where you are in the game, and we know that this person that just clicked, clicked one of your tweets, and therefore we could actually connect the two of you. So say you're in a game that allows multiple people to play, um, they, we could teleport them to you. So the idea of, of um, teleportation of your friends in real time, um, based on discoveries that you're making, these are the kind of ideas that you just, it just doesn't exist today, it's impossible. They'd be clicking download and be sitting there waiting for two hours while they wait for the whole thing to get ready. That, that, that's where cloud gaming is going to fundamentally change discovery and sharing of game experiences, and, and I'm really excited to see that. Some of the core challenges for cloud gaming are, um, there's, this, <laughs> there's this trend going on right now where it's like, uh, well, we make the cloud gaming solution, but we don't, we don't worry about the, the network. Like, w the publishers can deal with the network, and that's, that makes your life a lot easier, right? If you just say, well, the publishers can deal with that. Um, and, and it just, conceptually, it, it sounds good, but it turns out to make a cloud gaming solution, by far the most difficult part is making the network and the enterprise software and the management and the peering uh, with all of the different uh, networks around the world and, you know, setting up and adjusting all the passing and, and routing of data. It's so, so complex and difficult to just say, none no, of the publishers will take care of that. That's about the last thing in the world the publishers want to hear. And so it's, it's, 
you know, I think that, that the companies that get into cloud gaming step by step are going to finally realize, oh my goodness, we have to build global networks ourselves if they're going to do this properly. And secondly, you can't rely on anyone else's service. We've tried it all. We've tested all of this. There's no Amazon. There's no one else that has close enough, fast enough networks to, um, to deliver the experiences that are needed. And so you have to build it yourself. There is no other way to do this. And so the, I guess the point is that if you're at the stage where you're saying, well, we don't even build the network. Someone else will do that. The, the next step is that they're going to say, well, you can just go to Amazon and they'll, build, they'll make your network for you. That won't work either. And so I think that's probably my biggest concern is there's a lot of companies that are heading into stall states where, where they could actually um, make more progress if they were, if they were to embrace the full problem. Um, but ultimately, it's okay because there are some companies already building global networks. And, um, and so cloud gaming is definitely here to stay. The cloud gaming conference is, um, has helped me greatly because there are a lot of people sitting in that room quietly listening. And um, if you look at the attendee list, you'll see these are the people from Sony and from Microsoft and from Nintendo and from the top game publishers. And, um, and so all of these different companies are quietly just taking notes and listening to what everyone's saying and how they're presenting. And, um, and recently, uh, our company was bought by Sony. And um, it, they, at one point, one of them did, did mention the fact that they had had watched uh, a presentation I had done at the cloud gaming um, conference. And I think, it, it, you know, of course, there's multiple different things that matter, like they have to experience your service, they have to look at how you're doing your networking and everything else. But, but as you present your company side by side with other companies, I think it's a really good opportunity to get the, the you know, into people's minds as, as this is one of the companies we need to go to talk, talk to.